So, let us continue with the description of the protein structures at more fundamental level. We said that the relative orientations of the amino acids depend upon some torsion angles described as phi and psi in the previous slide and we will examine more about that now. So, here we have the peptide uh, chain running like this schematically indicated here. So, you have the alpha carbon there is a carbonyl here. So, NH the chain is running like this the chain is running like this NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO it goes like that all the atoms are indicated here. So, now this is alpha carbon and then you have this this is the peptide group this is the peptide group ok. Now, these four atoms this is the carbonyl this is the double bond here and this is the NH here ok. Now, how many torsion angles are there here you have in between the dipeptide ring you have one torsion angle here another torsion angle here and a third torsion angle here. These ones are called as omega, phi and psi. So, N C alpha torsion angle is called as phi and C alpha C dash or the carbonyl, carbonyl is also called as C dash that rotation around this is called as the psi. Now, what does this rotation mean ok. Now, consider these four atoms, consider the four atoms suppose I take this carboxyl carbon nitrogen and NH proton ok. Suppose I take this uh, what will be the orientation of this, this bond with respect to this bond if they are exactly in the opposite direction if they are in the same side of these two atoms then we say it is a cis configuration right. If this carboxyl and this NH protons are on the same side of this bond typically one can write uh, such kind of a things then we call this as a cis configuration. If it is like this cis configuration, but if it is this is called as a trans configuration and the trans configuration meaning that this omega torsion angle which is indicated here this is 180 degree because that is a more stable structure that is a more stable structure and uh, by and large that does not change at all. Why is that so? Because this carbonyl carbon this is a double bond. So, this bond the N C alpha N C dash N C dash bond this also has a certain kind of a double bond character. When there is a double bond, double bond character there is no free rotation possible here. So, by and large the free rotation is restricted and there and the most stable structure is the one where you have this these two going in the opposite direction. In the same way you can also say if these are in the opposite direction this car this C alpha and this C alpha will also be uh, in opposite opposite or orientations. So, therefore, this is the peptide bond that we call therefore, the peptide bond is, is, is a planar bond there is a planar the peptide plane is plane planar ok. And now what about this now this is called as a phi torsion angle and this is the rotation around this bond. So, which atoms do we consider so in this just as we consider here the four atoms we consider these four atoms this carbon this nitrogen this carbon and this carbon. If we consider these four carbons these four atoms what is the relative orientation of this carbon and this carbon with respect to this bond. So, if they are in the same orient same sign direction then it is a cis configuration or if they are in opposite sense this is called as a trans configuration ok. Now, all in between things are also possible because this is the free rotation possible here because this is not a double bond uh, here therefore, there is a free rotation possible. So, this determines the relative orientations of this amino acid with respect to this amino acid. So, this is one torsion angle. So, and then the second torsion angle is this this is called as the psi and that is a free this is also a single bond this is C alpha C dash C alpha carbonyl this is also a single bond. Now, we can look at what are the um, uh, relative positions of if you look at this um, four atoms nitrogen C alpha carbonyl C dash and this nitrogen if you take these four atoms with respect to these two this bond whether this nitrogen and this nitrogen are in the same direction or in the opposite direction the same direction will be the cis configuration other one will be the trans configuration you can have all values in between. So, then we say the gauche conformation trans conformation typically we know from the stereochemistry these are the different possibilities. So, you have different kinds of possibilities here. So, in, in principle they can all go from 0 to 360 
or we also sometimes call it as plus 180 to minus 180 conventionally one it can use both conventions whether you want to define from minus 180 to plus 180 or 0 to 360 both kinds of conventions are used and initially I want us to figure out which are the possibilities. Now what determines these choices? Of course the steric context is an important factor there. When you consider all these various rotations or all the orientations possible some of them are not because as a result of when you do this there can be clashes in the various atoms. The side chains of one amino acid residue can clash with the side chains of the other amino acid residue in which case that kind of a combination of the torsion angle will not be possible. So this is what was investigated in great detail by J. N. Ramachandran and there um, he calculated the energies of this dipeptide considering the possible different possible orientations different possible values of phi and psi and generated the values as the two dimensional map energy map he generated and what is uh, shown are these the combinations which are possible and not possible. On one side you have the phi torsion angle on the other side you have the psi torsion angle and then considering the energies he said okay with, with below a certain energy it is allowed below and above a certain energy is not allowed. If that is because if you have a 5 kilocalorie per mole if you have that kind of an energy you look at the Boltzmann statistics then you will find that 5 kilocalories and above it is almost impossible to get any probability for that sort of a structure. Therefore he eliminated all those combinations which lead to the uh, uh, steric clashes and this is popularly known as the Ramachandran plot. Ramachandran plot and you see all this empty space which is here this is disallowed this is disallowed only the red ones which are indicated here these are the areas where you can have a combination of phi and psi. These are called phi psi maps or Ramachandran plot and these are the various values which are indicated here. You have the 0, 0 in the middle here and then you have the plus 180 and minus 180 that is the convention that is used and uh, uh, of course that is also the trans and here you have the gauche conformations there. Now you see if your phi and psi angles are in this domain in this area this will lead to the formation of a helix structure. The, we talked about the helical structure it, this leads to the formation of the helical structure. In that also there is a fine distinction made there is a so called alpha helix or the 310 helix. In this one in the alpha helix there are 3.6 residues per turn in the 310 helix this is a 3 residues per turn this is somewhat more uh, compact and you have that kind of a structure also possible and that appears above this slightly outside this range of the alpha helix. So phi psi torsion angles are indicated for the helical region. On the other hand on this area this is a much larger area allowed area so you have the beta conformations there. In this area you have the uh, parallel beta sheet if you have these values here in the parallel beta sheet and uh, you have in this area you have the uh, anti parallel beta sheet. And there are also certain other kinds of helix these are more like it is called a polyproline if you have a um, sequence which has only prolines along then it actually it adopts the um, uh, structure which is similar to the beta sheets and uh, although it is forms a helix but the combinations of the uh, torsion angles are in this manner. This is polyproline helix is more like a beta structure okay so therefore this comes in this area. Then you also have what is called as the collagen helix. Collagen was the structure which G. N. Ramachandran was working. He was actually actually this came out as a result of his investigation on the collagen structure. The collagen forms a triple triple, triple stranded uh, helical structure. So it has very specific very special combinations of torsion angles, and you have three strands there intertwined, and uh, that leads to a stable structure. Okay, and that results in a helical structure. But the torsion angles there are in this in this area therefore this is a, called as a collagen helix. So you have the anti parallel beta sheet the parallel beta sheet and then you have also a type 2 beta turn. So this is the type 2 beta turn okay type 1 beta turn also appears somewhere here. So you have these various kinds of uh, beta turns which are appearing the secondary structures the combinations are possible. These are slightly extended areas these the, the thick ones are the ones which are very strongly favored and the ones which are slightly thinner the shaded these are less favored and therefore but they are possible it is not that they are not possible they are possible but they are less favored. The thick areas are the most favored and then you see here 
you have a so called left handed helix. So, what is present here is the left handed helix ok and uh, this particular region which is uh, uh, alpha helix but it is a left handed helix. These ones are right handed alpha helices, this is a left handed alpha helix. And you see most important thing is much of this uh, two dimensional space is disallowed. You cannot have combinations of this if anybody determines the structure of a protein with this phi psi torsion angles falling in this area then the structure is not acceptable because it will lead to clashes and um, steric clashes will be there and there certainly will not be a stable structure. Okay. Now with having looked at the various possibilities of the structures and we want to go into the NMR application how to determine the structures and what are the characteristics of the protein spectra depending upon what is the nature of the structure. And here is the typical illustration of if you have a protein which is very well folded that means it has the regular combinations of helices, sheets, turns, etc. everything present then you may have a protein the spectrum the proton spectrum. This is the proton spectrum goes from 0 ppm to 11 ppm here is a beautifully spread out peaks here and and uh, in the case if the protein is unfolded in the sense that there is no particular preference for a particular combinations then there will be dynamics in the protein chain and there are multiple combinations are possible for each amino acid and then what we will see is an average of this chemical shifts. So for the individual uh, amino acid the various protons which we talked about where which are present on the amino acids they will all be in a very narrow region here. So such a kind of a structure is called as an unfolded structure. It has no specific combination, no stable helix or beta sheet and things like that. So they will all be exchanging very rapidly and you will have an average um, chemical shift and all of them will form in this area. Okay, what are these different regions? So let us look at that. And because of this different chemical shifts, it pro NMR provides you a tool for determining the structures of the three dimensional structures of the protein. Okay. Now here is a detailed analysis of what sort of chemical shifts are present for the different for the different protons in your polypeptide chain. So typically this area from here to here these are the backbone amide protons. This is almost from 6.5 ppm all the way up to 11, 10.5, 11 ppm you have the backbone amides. And here you have the aromatic protons that is up to 8 ppm typically about 6.5 to or 7, 6.8, 6.9 up to 8 ppm you have the aromatic protons. Then you have the side chain amino, side chain amide groups. Where are these side chains? These are in the aspergine, aspergine and uh, glutamines and also in arginine and the lysine. These are the 4 residues which had amide groups or the NH groups in the, in the side chain and they will appear in this area from 6 ppm to 8 ppm. And then along the um, uh, um, uh, backbone you have the alpha protons, this is the as I said C alpha, C alpha attached to the C alpha is the H alpha proton. And then you have all other side chains here in the aliphatic groups and the methyl groups here. The methyls are there for the valines, isoleucine, alanines okay, and then, and then the, the, the threonine. So all of these methyl groups appear in this area. So therefore they are very characteristic chemical shift patterns therefore for the different types of protons in your polypeptide chain. Okay. Now here I want to show you the once again the same amino acids but the nomenclatures of the individual atoms. Okay. So this is individual residues you notice here where is the chain going this is the carboxyl and this is the nitrogen. And these are now in the amino acid in the polypeptide chain as they are present in the polypeptide chain okay not individual amino acids as they are present in the polypeptide chain. So this is the nitrogen then the C alpha carboxyl this is the chain which is running like this and then the side chain is going like this you have the C beta here the C beta this is the methylene group so this is H beta 1 and H, H beta 2 H beta 3 here there are 2 and then you have the C gamma. So then you have this um, C gamma has again 2 protons there H gamma and then you have the C delta once again they have this uh, 2 protons there okay. and this joins the uh, nitrogen. Therefore proline does not have a free amide proton on the backbone. On the, in the glycine for example has 2 alpha protons here 
alpha protons in the chain NH C alpha C orans like this. Alanine has 1 methyl and 1 alpha proton. Arginine has this 2 beta protons, 2 gamma protons, 2 delta protons and then you have from this epsilon you have this 1 amide proton here and then you have this another carbon going over to the NH2 group here then the N and then NH and NH2 there are so therefore the arginine is a quite a elongated chain so a quite a bit of basic nature here because of this so many nitrogens present here. And aspargine as we said already had CONH2 and the CONH2 is this you have the COH, COH here and then you have this NH2 there. This is the nomenclature they called as delta okay these atom names are labeled as gamma, delta and so on and so forth. And uh, aspartic acid again has, has the COOH here in the side chain C beta at the gamma position you have the COOH and cysteine as the gamma position you have the SH and then you have the 2 beta protons there and glutamine has again the CONH2 with the gamma proton has 2 with the gamma position you have 2 protons and this one similarly in the glutamic acid you have the COOH in the side chain there and that appears as the delta. Why I am going through all of this is because these one nomenclatures one will use very frequently when you describe the protein structures. We say here is the proton, beta chemical shift, gamma chemical shifts, delta chemical shifts and so forth. Therefore, one should know which proton we are talking about in the uh, backbone. And histidine has this uh, nomenclature here, you have the N epsilon, there is a proton here and then there is a proton there which is attached to these are the two protons which are there is an exchange here which can happen between these two protons. So similarly we have this um, alpha, beta, gamma and delta for all the amino acids it follows in this this is a typical convention which is followed in the IUPAC nomenclature of the amino acids. Okay. So you, you immediately you can see here now what, are, what we are trying to show here. Now these are the various amino acids alanine, cysteine with the 20 different amino acids and what are their proton chemical shift ranges? The proton chemical shift ranges you see they are quite distinct although there are certain range of overlaps here these are many things which are overlapping in this area but and the alphas are appearing in this area which you already indicated there and these ranges indicate the variations possible depending upon the protein structure. What is the kind of an environment for this particular alpha group? So depending upon that you have certain variations. Now the distinctive features are of the alanine okay so the beta is very distinct here okay so with regard there is only one, one alpha and then there is a beta and the cysteine has the beta which is somewhere here aspartate also has a beta here and the glutamate has the gamma and the beta so you must have be, you must be able to connect all of those ones there. The phenylalanine is alpha and the beta of course there is no connection to the aromatic rings here, the aromatic proton positions are not shown here because there will also be aromatic ring protons there. The glycine has only alphas, histidine has alpha beta so these are called the ABX spin systems okay all these are long chain side chain these are called long side chain uh, spin systems we have this and then you have some which are only alphas and the betas there are many residues which are only alphas and betas. See this one is alpha beta and uh, of course this one is alpha beta, this is alpha beta and this is alpha beta gamma, alpha beta, alpha beta okay there are many like that okay this one is an alpha beta okay and once again this is alpha beta but the serine alpha beta is very close to the alpha area. This is because of the OH group, OH group which is present on the side chain the beta proton comes very close to the alpha there and tryptophan this is again alpha beta, tyrosine is alpha beta and the threonine also has alpha beta which is very close to the uh, these are very close because once again there is a OH group on the threonine side chain but it has also a methyl so that is a gamma and that distinguishes it from the serines. Threonines and serines are distinguished because of this although these areas are overlapping but the threonine has a methyl in the gamma position. And the valines alpha, beta, gamma. Now here are, is an experimental spectrum and this is a so called um, toxic spectrum and you can see here the various amino acids which are uh, um, typical peak patterns what you get. And this is essentially um, what is listed here is explicitly shown in this. Here you have the alpha, beta which alpha, betas will be present all alphas will be present 
but the betas of the serines and threonines will be there. But of course, in this sequence there is no threonine, you only have the serine there. Okay, all alpha are there for a particular section of a protein spectrum. Okay, and then on this side you have there the the betas and the gammas and all of those. And this area is belongs to the lysines. Okay, and these are the side chains. This area belongs to the side chains. These appear in pairs because the CONH2, the two protons on the NH2 are non-equivalent and they will be connected to the thing in the side chain uh, in this manner. So, they will be in pairs, they will appear together. Okay. And so, these from each of the backbone amide, from the each of the backbone amide, so you see the correlations. You can see these peaks, peaks in the toxi or you will also see them in the nosy. In the nosy spectrum, we already talked about the toxies and the nosy, so I will show you again those ones um, below. And here you have the correlation to the glycine, so the glycine is here and you look at the serine here, serine alpha is here and the beta is here which is quite close. There is one glycine here, another glycine there, there is no other one below or above that. Okay. So, we, you have, therefore the lines are drawn here to indicate this, they all belong to a particular amino acid and from that particular amino acid you have the same pattern. Okay. So, you look at the lysine here, this is the alpha of the lysine and goes all the way to this beta, gamma and all of those ones there. Okay. So, now here from histidine, histidine you are seeing to this beta and does not have any other one there and these side chains these are epsilons. Okay, from the side chains of this ones you will also see to the betas of the asparagine and the glutamines uh, and also sometimes you will see to the epsilons of the lysines. Arginines and lysines they will also appear in this area and they will see the, because those ones are indicated here. You can see here the lysine, see the beta, gamma and delta they are appearing here and the epsilon is appearing here. The epsilon is at th chemical shift for 3 ppm, very distinct. Okay. And sometimes you may see these peaks, you may not see this peak. You will see them in the nosy, but you may not see them in the toxic spectrum because it has the relay has to go all the way down. Depend upon the, what is the mixing time you use in the toxic spectrum, it may not reach up to the epsilon, but it will certainly reach up to the alpha, beta, gamma and sometimes to the delta. So, you will see distinctive intensities for these different peaks as you are looking at that. Of course, what is present here is the water. Okay. <coughs> Okay, now, this is a typical cozy spectrum of a peptide and the various regions are indicated there. So, what are these here? These ones are the aromatic protons. As we said the aromatic ring protons have a correlations among themselves, the couplings between themselves. So, in the cozy spectrum you will only see cross peaks here for the aromatic ring protons. And then from these ones and this area belongs to the NH C alpha H. NH C alpha H, NH proton is coupled to the C alpha H, this is a 3 bond coupling and you will see those ones in this area. So, therefore, the cozy spectrum shows NH to the C alpha H. Now, from the C alpha H of course, you will see to the C betas here and the beta to the gammas you will see beta, beta etc. This of course, region is a quite a crowded region there. So, one can identify only from the alpha to the betas here, then you have the beta gammas and then you have the gamma deltas. Okay, and then down to the epsilons and the methyls etc. they will all come in this area. So, this is typically categorized in certain boxes here depending upon what sort of a proton pairs are involved in this generation of the cross peaks. Okay. So, you see here the difference between the cozy and the toxic and this is the same this is again the NH to the alpha area we saw earlier. So, NH to the alpha this appears in this area from 9 ppm around this area 7 ppm to the 9 ppm you see a cross peak to the individual uh, alpha amino acids alpha proton of the same residue. In this case a particular region is taken you have this 5 uh, peaks there of course they have a fine structure which is expected because all these protons have a fine structure and that will reflect in the cross peak also. Therefore, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 you can identify this 5 amino acids there. And then corresponding to those ones of course, you will also in the toxic spectrum you will see uh, additional peaks and what those additional peaks are they will belong to the beta, the gamma and the delta. 
Therefore, looking at this kind of a pattern what you will have, you can identify what sort of a spin system, what sort of an amino acid it is. For example, this one has many protons which are connected to it, right. So therefore, this is clearly a long side chain and this one is has only one fellow here. So this is alpha and then there is only one, there are two peaks here possibly there and these ones are the beta 1 and beta 2. So the relay has happened from the alpha proton to the beta 1 and beta 2 there. So and now this one has. Now this amino acid has an alpha proton here and then it goes to the, to the beta here and then to the gamma there. So therefore this also is a little longer side chain. See now it see it goes into the methyl area. Once it comes into this area it is the methyl proton region. Therefore these are likely to be like the valines and the isoleucines or leucines and things like that. Okay. Now you look at the next one here, so this alpha proton has 2 peaks here and these are around the 3 ppm. And, and looking at the table what I showed you here, this is again uh, 2 beta protons of a particular amino acid residue and these are most likely to be the aromatic ones. Aromatic ones are present in this area, this is the 3 ppm, these are the tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine and sometimes the histidine. So you might find these, uh, it, it can belong to this kind of residues. And now you are here you have the alpha, one of the last alpha proton there, now this peak corresponds to this here. Okay. But this one also has a certain other ones residues here which are going like this. So therefore there are threonines or the beta protons or the alpha protons and so on and so forth there can be some other residues that can be overlapping over there. This is what you see in the toxi and this is the more detailed um, region or the other region of this of the same spectra. So you have coming from in the alpha in the aliphatic area, the aliphatic area you have this various correlations the beta 1 and beta 2 alpha to the betas and these will be the alpha to the beta cross peaks then you have to the beta to the gamma cross peaks then you have gamma gamma cross peaks here. So you will have a whole set of cross peaks which uh, one needs to analyze looking at the sequence what you have then you can fix those. Okay. So now that is for the identification of the individual amino acid residues. Now you have to connect them sequentially. Cozy spectrum only shows within the same amino acid residue. Cozy does not show peaks um, between amino acid residues. From one residue to another residue, it does not show because there is no such proton-proton coupling which can tell you that. Okay. However, these ones will appear in the nosy spectrum because the nosy spectrum reflects on the proton-proton distances. Okay. So the proton-proton distances are uh, can be quite varied depending upon the structure what you might have in the protein. So you certainly have near neighbor interactions, near neighbor interactions are the sequential interactions. You can also have a long range interactions which will determine the secondary structure of the protein. Okay. So there is a brief uh, of, uh, of the distances here, the various distances which are present in the polypeptide secondary structures. Let us look at this particular, we will have to go through this um, again in a greater detail. And the polypeptide chain is indicated here NHC alpha CO, NHC alpha CO, NHC alpha CO, its chain is running like this residue I, residue I plus 1, I plus 2, I plus 3 and so on and so forth. The why you are taken 4 residues because we are having, we are going to have short distances between the protons um, uh, as far as 4 residues away and that is in the regular. Uh, secondary structures therefore one has to show these 4 residues. And it is uh, the various um, uh, short distances that are indicated by uh, lines there and we will go through these individual ones possibly in the next class, I will stop here.